Before we get into this video, just a reminder that there are, of course, under construction spoilers here. Uh, this story is a bit mad, so uh, enjoy. What's up, Brozones? Welcome to the Ozone, and welcome to another summary video. We have done Frailty, we have done Lally's Game, we have read through the epilogue, I'll be doing a summary on that as well anyway. Today we are going through what is the most insane story I have ever read. Like, ge like genuinely just ever. But before we get into it, I do want to just touch on the fact that this story actually mentions cancer quite a lot, so uh, if, if you don't like that then maybe it's a better idea to click off and come back to this another day. Uh, this is really bad timing, I know, so I'm sorry about that. But, uh, before we actually get onto the summary, I'm actually going to make the lighting red to seem, I don't know, more ominous or something? I don't know. Oh, there we go. That's better. I don't even know if that works very well, but, uh, it's very light in here. The reason I've done that is because I want you to know that this is, uh, a serious story. <laughs> this is a very comedic story. Um, <laughs> my friend Inky Ink is going to love this story, uh, JK, he's going to absolutely hate it. Let's get into this story. Under construction, I have my notes here. <sighs> it is Mayer's, or Myers. I'm saying Mayer because I knew someone called Mayer. Mayer's 16th birthday, she and her friends are at the Mega Pizza Plex. And, uh, her friends and her are, like, basically nerd. I don't know if she's a nerd, but her friends are nerds. They're scientists. Uh, they talk about quantum immortality and the many worlds theory. That's very sus. I wonder what will happen in this story. So, of course, it's Maya's birthday, and she finds this AR booth in the Pizzaplex called The World Celebrates You, and it's apparently this AR booth that gives you, like, the best party in the world, the best birthday party in the world. So of course Maya would want to go into it and uh, celebrate her birthday because it, it would probably be better than in reality. And unfortunately it is closed, it is under construction, hence the title of the sto story. Of course it does say under construction, it does say do not go in, but what does Maya do? Well she's a horror story protagonist so she goes straight in there, um, she ignores the under construction sign and she wears the sensory headband that makes the whole AR thing work and she is suddenly at a large birthday party at the Mega Pizzaplex where she is the center of attention. Everyone is there, all of her family, all of her friends, all of the animatronics at the Mega Pizzaplex are looking at her, bringing her cupcakes and pizza or something, I don't know, I'm making the story up at this point. It's basically just her ideal birthday party. Uh, that she is seeing and then when she's done she leaves the booth and she starts having these headaches but she just assumes that it's from the sensory headband that she wore um, it's not not a big deal right having he uh, having headaches she has headaches for a year she she <laughs> she genuinely has headaches for a whole year until of course it's her 17th birthday now and her grandmother dies from cancer. Now, cancer is a very serious disease in the real world, and if I'm being completely honest, I don't really know why they used a real world disease in this story, because this story is really comedic, and they, honestly, they really, really should have used a fake disease, because this is kind of like, weird to talk about. So, this is, I'm just telling you what's in the story. I'm not making fun of cancer or anything. Um, so, her grandmother dies of cancer, suddenly, her grandfather has cancer, her grandfather dies of cancer. All of these kids at school, they're, they're telling Maya about the fact that their relatives have cancer, and are dying of cancer, and her father has cancer now, and so, like, Maya is really concerned, why are all these people getting cancer? Cancer is a non-communicable disease, <laughs> like, how are people passing on cancer? Is this COVID 2.0? I don't freaking know. Uh, hopefully Scott Cawthon isn't uh, telling the future. The weird thing about all of this though is Maya is the only one in the world that is concerned about all of this. About the fact that people are just getting loads of cancer. 
Um, and the, the, one of the funniest things about this, I might have to make like a comedy sketch about this in the future, is that news reporters on the TV, they're reporting hundreds of thousands of death, de deaths to cancer with this happy, joyful music in the background. That's just so funny to me. Now, here is where the weird part of the story comes in. I mean, this is, this, it doesn't even get this weird yet, but this is extremely weird. Maya visits her teacher's newborn baby and she's holding it in her arms and it's got the blanket over the face. She lifts the blanket from the face and what she sees is, well, no face. I like to make the joke that she's just holding the baby the wrong way around, but that's not true because the baby doesn't have a face and even weirder, it's, it's, its entire body is made of like a, a translucent jelly. Seriously, I don't know how someone came up with this story. Like, they must have been on the highest, <laughs> highest drug. So basically, it's described as a faceless, jelly-filled mannequin. Uh, it's kind of terrifying to think about. Uh, I don't want to think about it, but I have to because it's FNAF. Um, and again, Maya is the only one concerned. All of her friends are like, why, why, why do you think the baby looks awful? It looks completely fine. It's completely normal. Um, so yeah, and it gets to the point where, well, what happens? People all around the world are having babies and their newborns don't have faces and they are made of jelly and what the hell is happening to this story? Seriously, I, I think they have literally written the end of the world here. The weird part about this, well, there are many weird parts about this, but the other weird part about this is that they don't grow like usual babies they grow up like a thousand times as fast so a few days later her teacher's newborn baby is like a full-on well not an adult it's just a pile of goop just a pile of jelly uh they grow faster and faster each day until they pile up in public uh motionless essentially they're just flat in in the streets uh they fuse together with each other uh, in this like transparent gel monster thing. It's like one being. It does remind me of Stranger Things a lot. Um, and all of these bodies are just blocking houses, like literally overgrowing houses and sidewalks and stuff. You literally cannot get from one place to another anymore because there's these jellies just blocking the street. This is the most insane story I've ever read. I did not like say that lightly before and now of course everyone is forced to stay in their homes uh mayo realizes that everything bad like happened because of the ar machine or like the, the day that she went in the ar machine thing bad things started happening um and she's starting to think is this actually reality or is this like a simulation is this fake then the creatures bust through the window and uh they corner her and it pulls her into its own mass. And now she is part of this gel goop that is literally taking over the world. But here is the kicker and here is the ending. Weirdly enough, I thought it would go on a little bit longer. Maya can't sense or breathe, but she isn't dead. She hopes it will be all over soon. I hate FNAF these days. <laughs> it's so weird. It's such a weird story. I don't know if you can get any weir weirder than this. Like, you remember when He Told Me Everything came out and everyone was like, this is the weird, like, what is this? This has nothing to do with FNAF. Like, th it, what is this goo with F-A-Z in front of it? Uh, and then, you know, things like sea bonnies came out, that was weird. Kids at play, people started turning into k kids at play signs. And then this. Literally everything that we know, but like everyone you know, getting cancer, all of their newborns becoming jelly babies, and <laughs> the world being covered in a translucent jelly. I... Now, the the worst part about this is there are some even like 
there, there are some weird details in the story that I need to pick up on. And also, I do actually kind of want to theorise about this because, weirdly as it sounds, there are stuff to theorise about. So, first of all, I'll start with like small details that I found funny. Uh, basically, the British uh, did a like a news report or whatever, and they introduced the mass cremation law. They're now cremating people, I assume. Uh, also, it's important to note that throughout this entire story, there's just a lot of under construction uh, signs everywhere. Oh, and that's what I was gonna say. Brilliant. The babies with no faces, they are quite literally under construction because they're not fully developed. <laughs> oh, it's such a stupid joke. Anyway, let's talk about this. Um, because at the start of the story, I kind of did like a wink and a nod at you. Uh, actually, I can't wink, but uh, I, I kind of like nodded at you like, hmm, yes. Quantum, quantum immortality. Hmm, many worlds theory. Um, it's kind of clear that this entire world isn't the real world, otherwise it would uh, be the end of the FNAF world uh, and Scott Cawthon never wants it to be the end of FNAF. So it's clear that this is all a simulation, uh, it's all digitalized, and Mayo was in there for a year, right? Like, kind of living her own life in the game, which is weird because like, we never saw the real world again after she went in the AR world. Um, so, that's also... it's that's, I love this premise for a story because it's kind of like... If you go in... If you go into a simulation, how do you know when you're out of it? Like, what signifies that you're no longer in a simulation? Because if you think about it, you put on a VR headset, you could technically take off the VR headset in the VR game, but you wouldn't know, uh, and that's that's kind of like what this story is kind of saying. That is a creepy concept, and that would be an an, an incredible story if it wasn't so comedic. <laughs> this the like this would be scary. This would be terrifying. I would like I would absolutely love this story. Adore it to pieces if it wasn't so comedic. And the comedic part comes from the fact that you know. Uh, like, there's jelly beings, they all merge into each other, there's one like jelly amalgamation that's covering the world. Uh, that's just so funny to me, so I wish it wasn't that funny, uh, because I actually really like this story. I've actually heard theories that um, the reason she didn't die in the end, or she's never gonna die or something, is because she actually died in the AR under construction thingy, the, went the AR game, and her soul kind of went into the machine. Which I actually think is a really good theory, because if you consider things like Princess Quest, where like Cassidy is controlling an arcade, well not controlling an arcade game, but is stuck in an arcade game. Also kind of Vanessa in a way, where like Cassidy somehow saves Vanessa, but how is Vanessa connected to an arcade game? So like, could be like that. Also Prankster. Prankster is one of those big stories that we didn't really ever figure out. Why did any of this happen? It's like, what does all of that mean? Maybe Jeremiah went into the VR game and was then on out, always in a simulation, never went out of the simulation. That's interesting to think about. Tell me what you think about it in the comments. And um, that's all I have except one last thing that I didn't tell you about. And I'm gonna literally end the video saying this. I've just decided right now, uh, yeah, the video is going to end when I say this. Maya's sister is called Elena.